Okay, um, the next talk will be by Sergei Krieger. He will talk about accessibility testing in with a screen reader. Yep. Give an applause to Sergei. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. And before we start, let's test the sound because we will need the sound today. Accessibility testing with a screen reader, Google Chrome, Sergey Wind, accessibility testing with a screen reader, web content, hi there, slash, 67548802 mile icon svg image, what's up, slash, 67548802 mile icon svg image, slide content, auto voiceover off. And sound is working, as, as you could see from this simple example, sometimes there's a big difference between how the page looks and how it sounds. And this is exactly our topic for today. We are going to talk about screen readers and how they work with our pages and how we can test web pages with a screen reader. My name is Sergey Krieger. I'm a front-end developer at the company called Sinner Shredder. It's a big web agency in Germany uh, located in Hamburg and with the offices in Berlin. Frankfurt, Munich, where I'm from, and also in Prague. And we are building web applications for the clients like Allianz, OD, BMW, and many others. And among front-end development, I'm really interested in accessibility topic, and this is something that we are going to talk today about. But before we uh, go deeper into screen reader topic, let's discuss first what screen readers actually are and why we as developers can, may need screen readers. Well, a screen reader is a software for both desktop and mobile devices that simply reads all the content from our operating system, including web browsers. And sometimes screen readers can be the only way how people can get the information from the web. So it makes this software really important. But even if screen readers are super important from, uh, some, for some people, what is our interest as developers in using screen readers? Because probably we will not use screen readers uh, without a real reason for that, right? But there are several reasons why we need that. First of all, have you ever tried to browse at least familiar web page without actually seeing a screen? You should definitely try that out because you will understand then how different it is from looking at the real page, real graphical interfaces, and interacting with uh, big and colorful elements in the web page. But there's a big group of people, people with visual impairments, who interact with the web exactly that way. And those people, they are also our users, and we as developers need to understand their way of interacting with our web pages. Also, accessibility is not optional anymore. Uh, more and more companies want their website to be accessible, and it's our job as developers to make those pages accessible. And if you guys still don't have that skill, you're in the right place today. I'm going to show you in practice how you can use screen readers for testing accessibility of your web pages. Last year, in October, an organization called WebAIM has conducted a big survey about screen readers. And I found uh, results of this uh, survey really interested, interesting, so let's take a look at a couple of the results. Here you can see the list of most popular and most common screen readers, JAWS, NVDA, and VoiceOver. And how many of you guys use Mac for developing? One. How about Windows? Good. And do we have some developers here? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe Linux? Oh, Linux, guys. Sorry for you guys. <laughs> because... There is one screen reader for Linux. It's not that popular. So the thing is here that two most common screen readers, JAWS and NVDA, are built only for Windows. And our favorite Mac, at least I'm a Mac user, I use a uh, voiceover on Mac, it takes only 11% of all screen readers in the market. So we really need to understand that screen readers, they're like browsers. They work differently, they are different, and we as developers need to understand those differences. And for you Linux guys, there's one screen reader, it takes, is, if I remember correctly, 0.0.3% in all market. So it maybe doesn't make sense to use it, so we need to really figure out other ways. And here is a list of things, how screen reader users actually um, use our pages, how they navigate through our pages, how they searching information uh, from our pages. And this information is super important because when we are testing our web pages for accessibility, we don't want to waste our time for testing something. We need to know exactly how those people are using our web pages and we want to test exactly those things. 
And the practical part of my presentation is built uh, exactly on these things, almost entirely on these things, and uh, we will uh, go through uh, all these things a bit later. All right, now we know what screen readers are, and I hope now you understand the import of importance of screen readers for accessibility testing. So how exactly, in practice, we can use screen readers for testing? We will follow today this simple plan. First of all, I will talk, uh, we will talk about uh, how we can set up different screen readers in different operating systems. And then I will introduce you a couple of problems you will definitely meet when you're just starting with the screen readers. It's very important. I had those problems. I know some of my colleagues had the same problems. So I'm here today to tell you what those problems are and to tell you how you can really quickly and smoothly go through them. And then I will introduce you a checklist, a checklist for learning screen readers. And we will go through that checklist step by step and understand how we can use screen readers and what uh, is important when we are testing screen readers. If you're a Mac user, and probably <laughs> there was only one Mac user here, uh, you won't have any problems because screen reader, voiceover screen reader on Mac is already installed, it's already pre-configured, so you, the only thing you need to know about screen reader is how to start this screen reader and how to use it, and we will discuss how to do that. And if you're planning to use NVDA screen reader, the situation is a bit different. First of all, NVDA screen reader is a free screen reader. You can download it for free in the official website. So in order to install it on your machine, go to official website, download it. And before you download, you will be kindly asked to donate some money which is optional, but since this screen reader is built by two blind developers from Australia and it's free for all the users, I don't see anything bad in donating some money supporting developers, but it's optional. And then, in principle, it's ready to go, but if you're planning to use NVDA screen reader for a long term, it really makes sense to install some additional voices because original voices this screen reader has, they are not really neutral and they are sound a bit weird. And also, there is no uh, such an option in this screen reader. Uh, when you're navigating through the web page, you cannot see exact place when your screen reader is focused on. So this is an extra option for this particular screen reader. Uh, so you need to install additional plugin for that, which is not a problem. And if you are thinking in using Joe's screen reader, situation is a bit different again. This screen reader is not free. It's expensive, I would say, and for one authentication key, you would pay, I don't know, a bit more than 1,000 euro. But there is, I know that it doesn't uh, sound really optimistic because it's quite expensive, but there is a nice option for Web Studios, for example. At least my uh, Web Studio bought us a one single USB dongle. It's a, it's a physical USB with a secret key on that, and everybody who plugged in this uh, USB is able to legally use this screen reader until this uh, USB is plugged in. So uh, the price is the same, but our agency bought just one uh, USB dongle for all the developers and be using it uh, one after another. So it's not a problem at all. And if you are not sure if you want to use Joe's screen reader and, or just want to try it, uh, there is an option to use this screen reader for 40 minutes for free. And after 40 minutes, you will need to reload your page, uh, your not page, your operating system. And then you will uh, have another 40 minutes, which also can be an option. And here we go. This is uh, really important information. There are a couple of super important problems that can totally kill your motivation in learning screen readers. And I'm going to list all those problems today. But before, I'm going to tell you a really funny short story from my personal experience. I was a Windows user for years, and I bought my first MacBook Pro six or maybe seven years ago. And at that time, I didn't know how to use Mac. And I, if you know this problem when you're uh, moving from Windows to Mac, it takes some time until you, until you get familiar with the operating system, until you can do some stuff there. So I didn't know anything about that. And at some point, accidentally, I clicked a couple of uh, keys in my keyboard and suddenly my MacBook Pro, new MacBook Pro, started talking to me. It was super weird at the time. Uh, I didn't know about accessibility, anything. And I didn't know even why people would need screen readers. So I just know, didn't know how to do um, anything with my computer. And the best solution I found at that time is simply reload, reload the system. And to be honest, it helped. 
but I'm pretty sure it's not the best way of dealing with the screen readers. So the first super important thing you need to know about screen readers is how to quickly start a screen reader and how to quickly exit it. And here you can see the shortcuts and some other options for three most popular screen readers. We're going to talk about these three screen readers today. And the first thing you need to know, you can start and exit your screen reader from the menu. And this probably is the fastest way when if you're a really beginner. So if you open your screen reader for the first time, don't use shortcuts, just go to menu, open it, close it, just memorize how to do that. And once you get uh, tired of screen reader, you know the way how to exit it. This is really important. And then once you get familiar with the screen readers, it's nice to uh, memorize those shortcuts. Uh, you, you can see now, so you can open screen reader really quickly. And by the way, you don't need to memorize all these shortcuts because at the end I will uh, share the link to this presentation. So it's already online. And if you see an asterisk next to shortcut, that means that this shortcut is valid but not active by default and you need to do it manually in the settings. So now you know how to quickly start screen reader and how to quickly exit it. Super important if you want to be uh, efficient with a screen reader. And the next thing, maybe even more important that you need to know is how to shut up your screen reader. This is a super important because when you start your screen reader, it's going to talk to you a lot. They cannot do anything. They are just talking and talking everything. Status of your operating system, status of your active application, your focus element you're focused on, and many, many uh, other things screen readers think important for us. But we don't need all this information, right? We only want to test something and exit screen reader and we are done. So you really need to know, especially at the very beginning, how to shut screen reader up. And this is super simple. Just click control key and screen reader will immediately stop talking. And once you click this uh, key again, screen reader will continue talking from the place you stopped him. This is really handy. And another important thing you may need to know about screen readers is the screen reader key. Screen reader key is a combination of one or maybe two shortcuts in your operating system, which in addition to other shortcuts can perform all the actions screen reader uh, has from keyboard only. And this screen reader key allows you to have unique shortcuts in your operating system for a particular screen reader, which is super important. And also, screen readers are smart enough to work differently with a big keyboard in your desktop machine and a tiny keyboard in your laptop. So you may need to uh, know which keyboard you are using and you can go to settings and change the keyboard type. All right, enough theory. This is a practical part. This is a checklist, guys, I created especially for you. And today, right now, we are going to go through this checklist step by step and I will show you how to test real web page with, this, uh, with these things. But before we go uh, further, a uh, small disclaimer. You will see me reloading this page time to time and if I do so, just know it's not cheating. That means that this uh, presentation engine I'm using today, it's not perfect yet with working with screen reader. So in order to provide you a better screen reader experience today, I need to reload uh, the page a couple of times. So let's go. Headings. Headings are super important for all screen reader users. According to statistics, most of screen reader users, when they just land on the web page, they first go through all the headings. They scan the headings in order to understand the page structure, in order to understand what is this page about, and then they make a decision either they want to stay on the page or they want to leave it. So it's super important to have all headings readable and reachable and accessible by screen readers and also important to have a proper uh, heading structure in your web page. And here is a demo page. Uh, and we are going to test this demo page. There is nothing in this page, just some text and some headings. And we are going to start screen reader now and test all these headings. But in order to make our screen reader experience uh, much, as much closer to the real screen reader users as possible, let's do a trick. As screen reader users, we are probably not supposed to see the screen. So I'm simply switching off the light. And now I'm going to start my screen reader and try to go through all those headings we just saw. Home. Accessibility testing with a screen reader. Google. Is it enough loud? Yes. Good. And now I'm going to use a shortcut from the previous slide and try to go through all the headings. Heading not found. Good. Voice over off. Screen reader couldn't find any headings. But again, if you look at the page, we 
clearly see that there are some headings, right? At least from the styling point of view. So let's go to the code and debug a bit. And these are our headings. And you can see that these headings are not real headings, they are just divs styled like headings, which from the visual point of view doesn't make any difference. But for screen readers, if you want our headings to be accessible by screen readers, we really need to use proper text H1 to H2. This sounds really obvious and maybe a bit silly, but people are still <laughs> using divs for everything, which is stupid. And here is the same page with the proper headings. So now let's try to. Uh, Switch off the light again, start the screen reader and try to read them. Home, behavior, accessibility testing with a screen reader. Heading level one, giant panda. Heading level two, behavior. Heading level two, diet. And you are currently on heading level. And the same way with a shift key, I can navigate backwards. Heading level two, behavior. Heading level one, giant panda. Voice over off. Good. And now we know that our page is accessible at least from the headings perspective. So all the headings are um, readable and all the headings they have a proper structure. So the uh, rule of thumb here is to have one uh, main heading which is H1 and then keep the really uh, clear structure of the headings depending on the chapters, depending on the information you have in the page. Good, now our headings are working. Let's go further. The next thing we are going to test are links. Links are also really important for screen reader users. Uh, it can be really handy to navigate through all the links. And can you imagine the situation when screen reader users, they already know the page. They know where to go, they, they know what this page contains, and the only thing they want to do is just to find a link they already used and click that link. That can be a really handy uh, way of navigating. And here's the same page, and there are some links on that. And now we are going to switch off the light again and try to read all those links with the screen reader. Behavior, accessibility testing with the screen reader. And now I'm clicking a shortcut for the links. Link not found. And again, screen reader couldn't find any links here. Voice over off. And even if those links, these four links are working links, they are not really accessible links. Let's debug it a bit. And this is how links are implemented here. Some of the links not really links. Just any elements in this case is just a span with a JavaScript click handler, um, which is good. And you can click it, click this link, and you will be redirected to other page. But from the screen reader point of view, it's useless. Nobody, n no screen readers will. Uh, be able to read those links. And some of the links, they are real links, a tag, but without href attribute. And the thing is that if the link, a tag, a HTML tag doesn't have href attribute, it's not a link for screen readers. So we can fix that. And the golden rule here is that if there is a possibility to use a native link uh, element like a tag, a HTML tag with a real href attribute with a value uh, of the URL, we really need to go that way. In this way, you will not be, um, you will not have to do anything else for accessibility. It's already working, it's already accessible. But if for some reason, um, maybe in the single page application, there is no way to use href with a string uh, as a value, and you really have to use a handler, it's okay to use a handler, but please include at least href, empty href attribute in the a tag. It looks like hack maybe, maybe even if it, it, uh, it is a hack, but who cares if this example is working? And I tested all this, uh, this example in all screen readers and it's working. And if for some reason you really cannot use a tag, but you use span for example, just include role uh, attribute with a value link and this way screen readers will be uh, able to understand that this element is a link and it uh, has to behave as a link. And now let's test our links and you can see here in this example that two links are blue and two links are purple and purple means visited links. And now we will try to navigate through all of them. Switch off the light again, starting my screen reader. Home, behavior, accessibility testing with a screen reader. And now I'll try to navigate through the links. China, link. And you can see that screen reader found this element, it identified that this is a link, so now uh, this link is already working. Chinling Mountains, visited, link. And you can see even screen reader is smart enough to identify that this link is already visited, which is good. Sichuan, link. Bamboo, visited, link. 
And the same way on a link. Uh, we can navigate through visited links only. Chingling Mountains, visited link. Bamboo, visited link. Voice over off. Good. Now we are sure that all these links are working links, which is amazing. Let's go further. The next thing we will test is the text on our web page. This is really important to have uh, all the text readable uh, by screen readers. So screen readers, they are actually readers. They are going to read all your page no matter what you put on this page. And this is important that if you have any text in your web page, this text should be readable. And this is a page, the same page, with some text, some headings, and some links and that. And now we are going to read all this page. And in my practice, I figured out that I'm mostly using uh, two ways of reading. Screen readers, they can read your text in many different ways, but I'm mostly using two ways of reading. It's a reading page from the top to the bottom and reading... Uh, text by items. So screen readers, when they are uh, parse the whole web page, they split all this content into several parts, uh, several items, uh, actually many items, and there is a way how you can jump from item to item when you are reading the page. So now I'm going to start my screen reader. Home, behavior, accessibility test. And start reading the page from the top. Behavior, accessibility testing with a screen reader, web content, understand users, accessibility. Oops. Heading level one, giant pan heading level one, giant panda, slash text dot png image, heading level two. And if you go back now, we can slash see text dot png image. This is an image. It doesn't look like an image. It doesn't have to be like an image, but for some reasons, it is an image. And maybe it looks really silly, but believe me, developers are using a lot of text in the images, for example, in banners. So this example may be useless, but it shows us that text can be not Text not necessarily should be a real text. You can use uh, text inside the image, and the rule here, if you have image with a text, you really need to provide an alternative text. Voice over off. Which is really simple. We can, this is our text image, and you can simply add a text to describe this image. And in this case, it's simple uh, duplication of the text we see on the screen. And now, if I start my screen reader again. Voice over on Chrome. Heading level one, giant panda. The giant panda is a bear native to South Central China. Image. It's still an image, but it's a readable image, which, is, uh, which makes this uh, element uh, reachable by screen reader users. And the same way, I can continue reading all this text. Heading level two, behavior. The giant panda spends its life roaming and feeding in the bamboo forest of the visited link. Chingling Mountains. And you can see that screen reader split all the content on this page into uh, items. And just to say, uh, this way how screen readers uh, split all the content is really different. You can control this um, way by changing verbosity settings. But the thing to understand here is that you have many, many items. And you can navigate through those items really simple. Voice over off. OK. Now we are able to read our page. What is next? And next is landmarks. Probably all of you know what landmarks are. Landmarks is a HTML5 elements which simply split all the content into bigger parts like header, main content, footer, navigation bars, uh, sections, articles, etc. And with, a, with these landmarks implemented in the right way, screen reader users can navigate quickly through the page. Let's imagine the situation that screen reader user uh, already know uh, the page. For example, it's a news website. And uh, screen reader users come to this page and they want to just go to the news article, jump directly to the uh, text and read it. And they don't want to go through navigation, for example, on through all the advertisements or uh, other stuff you have in your web page. They want to just jump directly to the content which were changed and read it. And uh, the right way of doing that, implementing this kind of website, is to put all changeable content in the main uh, tag which will tell you that this is the main content and the rest stuff is just supporting content like navigation, uh, footer, uh, and other stuff. And screen readers are smart enough to be able to read all these um, HTML5 elements like uh, headers, footers, etc. Unfortunately, uh, mm, voiceover screen reader on Mac doesn't have a dedicated shortcut for navigating through the landmarks. So we cannot test it directly this way, but there is another way of testing landmarks. So we won't uh, test our landmarks right now. We will do it a bit later. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you about uh, navigation tool. There is 
a nice way of navigating through different elements groups, uh, element groups on the web page. It's called uh, Elements List in JAWS and NVDA Screen Reader, and it's called Rotor in Mac. So we will go uh, and check how it looks in different screen readers. So for example, this is uh, how it looks in Joe's screen reader. Uh, I was able to open the list of all the headings in this page. Uh, this way I can open, uh, this is a landmark, sorry, and this is a list of headings, and the same way I can open the list of tables, the list of images, the list of, I don't know, lists, and navigate through them really quickly. This is just a list of different elements groups. And in Joe's you can set it up manually uh, in a way you want. In NVDA Screen Reader, there is also a way how to read all the landmarks. That's what you see now in the screen. And, for example, through headings, and there are five uh, element groups you can navigate through. It's uh, headings, uh, links, elements, forms, buttons, and landmarks. And in Rotor, tool in the macOS, uh, it works exactly the same like in JAWS. You can navigate through landmarks, navigate through headings, and you can set it up uh, manually. You can choose from the list uh, element groups you want to navigate through, and they will appear in this navigation tool. And this was a theory. Let's now see how it works uh, in practice. So this is a bit more complicated demo page. Uh, visually, it has a header, has a main content, has some footer, two navigation bars in the header and in the footer, and some links. And now I will start my screen reader and I will uh, open the navigation tool and try to navigate through these landmarks. Behavior, accessibility testing with a screen reader. So this is a uh, screen reader started and now I'm going to open the navigation tool. Landmarks menu. And I open the navigation tool. Here you can see the list of all landmarks and we don't see any landmarks here. And the same way I can articles open menu. articles. Web Sports, which is a feature of VoiceOver. Links menu. Links menu. Headings menu. Headings. Heading level one. Heading level two. Heading level two. Die. There's an easy way to navigate through headings. No items in Web Spots. Landmarks menu. And landmarks is what we need now. We want to test all landmarks, but we cannot do that. Let's uh, figure out why. VoiceOver off. We open the code and we see that all our landmarks are not landmarks, again, just divs. And in order for screen reader to be able to navigate through landmarks, we need to use HTML5 semantic elements like headers, footers, main, and other elements. So here is a working example. And now I start my screen reader again. VoiceOver on Chrome, behavior, accessibility testing with. Open the navigation tool. Landmarks menu. And here we go. Here is a list of landmarks. And let's say that we know this page and the only thing we want to go, uh, we want to do is navigate to the main content and read it. So this way I will simply use arrow keys to navigate through all these landmarks. Applet banner. Banner is a, a header. Navigation. Here's a navigation. Main. Main content again. Content info. Content info means footer. Navigation. And navigation. Second navigation in the footer. And I simply go to the main and click enter. Cont main. The giant panda is a bear native to South Central China. Heading level two, behavior. The giant panda spends its life roaming. And, and it wor it's working. Voice over off. So now we are able to navigate through all the landmarks, which makes uh, screen experience for screen reader users much more convenient. And we are done with our checklist. These uh, five simple things, it's not enough, not um, full information, not all information you need to know about screen readers, but even with these five items, you will be able to start testing your web pages for accessibility, and this is really important. Of course, screen readers, if you use screen readers full-time, as blind people do, uh, you need to know a lot more about screen readers, but just for testing your web pages, it's already more than enough. And for me, it didn't take too much time to learn that, and I'm pretty sure you won't spend more than 30 minutes uh, for opening this checklist, following all these items, learning how it works, and start finally testing your pages. And uh, it works exactly like uh, when you learn riding a bike, for example. It's really hard at the beginning, but once you learn it, you probably won't forget it. And let's recap what we covered today. There are three most common screen readers. Joe's for Windows, NVDA for Windows, and VoiceOver for Mac. And we as developers, we need screen readers, we need them for accessibility testing, we need them for understanding how our users can uh, interact with our pages. And to learn screen readers is super simple. You simply open the checklist uh, and go through that and learn it. 
And once you get familiar with this, options we cover today, you may be interesting, interested in uh, learning how to navigate through forms, for example, which is a standalone topic. It's a bit more complicated than things we learn today, but it's not a big deal once you already learned uh, all the basic stuff. And you can learn how to navigate through images or navigate through tables. Tables is a huge topic, standalone topic also. And if you need more information about screen readers, you can visit uh, official documentation for each screen reader or you can read uh, the article, amazing article hosted on webaim.org website about screen readers and also on YouTube there is a video series called Alicast recorded by Rob Dodson from the Google company. Uh, it's about accessibility in general but there are a couple of articles about screen readers. And here is a link to this presentation, it's already there and if you have any questions you can ask now or you can uh, find me somewhere here around. I'm going to stay maybe a couple of more hours here and you can uh, write me in Twitter, for example. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Nope. Thank you. Oh, one. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. Um, can I add additional voice to, to a text? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I did. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, uh, the question was, uh, is there a way how to set up, for example, voice, right? Different settings in the voice. Yes, in each screen reader has the settings. You can set up uh, different voices. In NVDA, it's a bit different uh, than in other screen readers because it's free. It has, uh, I guess, two, if I remember correctly, one for sure, but maybe two voices by default. But you can install them and set it up manually, and you can um, set up a pitch of the voice, uh, verbosity. You can set up the speed screen reader is talking. So what we hear today is a speed of. Uh, 45, I guess, but screen reader users use 90. It's really fast, so it, I cannot use it, uh, understand it in the uh, fast way. So yeah, there's, there's many, many options as you can, uh, which you can use for setup the screen reader settings. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I need to check that. No, I don't think so. Other questions? Yep. What about drag and drop controls and verification? Uh, <laughs> that's a really right question. Now I'm prepared. The, uh, the question was about how to uh, handle with the screen readers all these elements like drag and drop, for example. It's not the only topic. There's a drag and drop, there's a notifications which appears uh, asynchronously on the web page. So there are many, many, many things which are really complicated to implement. And what I'm doing now, I'm preparing another presentation for other conference about uh, screen readers and drag and drop. So there are some ways how to do that. It's not that convenient for screen reader users to use drag and drop elements. But and it requires a lot of work for developers to implement that because it's it's really simple to take an element, grab it uh, to a different uh, place in the web page, and release right. But for screen reader users, it's not that simple. But it can be implemented. You can implement, for example, uh, in addition to drag and drop, you can uh, attach a menu, custom menu to every element, maybe visible only for screen reader users. So screen reader users can go through that list and uh, choose, okay, I need to move that element to this part, for example. So it's possible. It's not going to be a drag and drop anymore, but it's going to be mm, accessible by screen readers. More questions? Good. Thank you very much. Sergey is a small token of appreciation. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.